zeroth order reactions. So now we're going to look at each for three different orders and look at them in very specific detail. We could theoretically do this for all reaction orders, except that it would take a very long time. And since we don't know calculus yet, or many of you don't know calculus yet, we have to actually give you a lot of the equations for it. You can't derive them as a sort of universal system. And so we're going to cover zero order, first order, and second order. Now, in this video, we're just going to look at zero. But I wanted to let you know that we're going to be looking at first and second in the exact same way. Because we're going to kind of speed through a few of these so that we don't bore you too much. So in each of these cases, differential equations is going to be used to find the formula. Now, we don't know differential equations. So in this class, we just give you the formula. Now, for each order, you're going to need to know the graph of concentration versus time and what that looks like. You should be able to recognize it and or sketch it. You're also going to need to know the linear graph for each. That's going to make a little more sense once we get to first and second order. And then how to use the equations for each to interconvert between several things. So we're going to give you the integrated rate laws, and then we're going to give you the half-lifes. Now, you're going to need to interconvert between the half-lifes, the final and the initial concentrations, and time. And that'll make more sense once we have some examples. So in this video, we're just covering zero order. So for a zero order, you should be able to create that graph that we discussed. You should be able to use the half-life formulas and the integrated rate laws to convert between any of these four things. So let's look at our rate law. We already know what a zero order rate law looks like. Zero order is not related to the concentrations. And so it's just that rate is equal to some constant k. There's no concentration of any reactant here because it's a zero order rate law. Now, Let's look at what an integrated rate law really means with this one. It's the simplest of the three. We won't do this for first and second order, but keep in mind the concept holds the same. So if you think about what this would mean, that as you have a specific rate, and that's equal to k, we could look at the equation for this, and we could watch as the concentration goes down, time keeps going. Or rather, as time keeps going, the concentration goes down. And we just have a straight line, which has a slope of negative k. And if you think about this rate law as an equation of a line, that makes sense. Now, if we were to integrate this, maybe you, you have a little bit of calculus. If you have no calculus, um, then, then you may not understand this completely, but that's OK. We can think about it as being the area under the curve. And we can pick any two points to do this. Now, that's what we call an integral. You don't have to worry about solving for this, but if you've never seen calculus before, that's a good definition for you to know. And if you have, you may even understand how to do this a little bit. So we could also express this in terms of an equation. And we could use this equation to go back and forth between time, initial concentration, and final concentration. And this is the part where diffie-q is involved in finding the equation, and so we're just going to give it to you. And so what we do is we call this the integrated rate law, because it's like the rate law. It's like rate equals k, except it's the integrated version of it. And so you get this equation that for zero order, this is only for zero order, we'll have different ones for first and second order, is the concentration at time t, that's what the subscript t means, equals negative kt, where k is still the, constant, the rate constant, t is time, plus a naught. Now if you look at this in terms, of variables and constants, you'll see that this takes on the form y equals mx plus b. Or in other words, takes on the form of a straight line with a slope of negative k. Now that's one useful way of doing it, is to be able to pull k from the graph. And you should know what the graph looks like. But you'll also often be given a problem such as this one, where I say using the integrated rate law, determine the rate constant k for a zero order reaction. And then I give you some information about it. I tell you the initial concentration of the substance, and then I tell you the time that it's going to run for to get another concentration. Now, using this, we're going to determine k. So because of that, I'm going to need to rearrange this. Right now, it's not really in a form that's conducive to solving for k. And you might be saying, can I fill in my numbers first and then rearrange? Of course. So I'll go ahead, I'll pull my numbers, or I'll 
separate out for k, which means that I need to subtract my a0, and then I need to divide by t. And from here, I'll have my value for k. So I can fill everything in, being really careful about what I fill in for what time, because that's going to change my rate constant if I mess it up. So my final concentration at time t was in at. So that's 0.75 minus my initial concentration, which was my 1.5, over top of my time. Now, I often get asked, what units do I have to put time in? And it doesn't really matter that much, because the units are going to come out in k. And so in this case, I left it as 120 seconds. Now, when we go to do this, and we go to solve for our answer, we end up with 0 0.0063 molarity per second. So you'll see why the time didn't matter for units, because I could have filled it in as minutes. I could have filled in two minutes. It would have changed my number, but it also would have changed my unit. So the important part is just that whatever unit you use, you remember to write that unit down for your k. Now let's look at something that we call half-life. Half-life is exactly what it sounds like. It's the amount of time required for half of the reactant to be used. Now, we can derive an equation off the integrated rate law for this. So what we can do is basically take the integrated rate law and make it into a slightly different format, which gives us this half-life. So let's look at it. In the, it's not really an example. It's more of a derivation. But I'm going to ask you a question that we can use to make this derivation work. So if half of the material is used, what is the relation between A0 and AT? So in other words, I want you to put AT, the final concentration, in terms of the initial concentration. So take a second and do that. So here, we would look at our A0 and say that AT, our, our amount at time T, is going to be exactly half of A0. So A0 divided by, half, divided by 2 or multiplied by a half is equal to AT. OK, why did we do that? Why was that important? Well, now what we can do is we can take our integrated rate law, and we can plug in, instead of having AT there, we can plug in A0. Now, that's, that's a little bit messy. We have two different sets of variables in different places. So we can do some rearranging. And with that rearranging, we now get a half-life that is equal to A0 over 2k. So we have the time that it's going to take to use up half of our material just in terms of our initial concentration. And that's a really useful thing to have. This is going to be the one time that I derive this for you. In the future, for first and second order, I'm just going to give you the integrated rate law, and I'm going to give you the formula for this. And you should take the time to do the connection point, to fill in the fact that AT is equal to 1 half A0, and determine how we make this, this sort of leap to the other equation, rather than me doing it special for you. So now let's do a quick review on everything that we have here. So we have three different forms of this equation. They're all almost the same. They're just very different forms of it. So we have the rate is equal to k. That was our initial rate law that we've been talking about for the past several videos. And then we have our integrated rate law, which was that new thing that we sort of kind of derived, except that I just gave you the answer for it. And that's really useful if we know two concentrations or a concentration at a time. Then we also have the half-life. And that can be used to solve for k. Or sometimes we really just want to know the half-life. We want to know the time until half of the material disappears. And you'll see that used a lot in medicine and nuclear chemistry.